and start the transcript. Um, okay, this is Flotilla Friday for January 28th, uh, 2022. Um, I was showing the um, biweekly Plex dispatch um, inbox kind of, and also uh, Wendy had some great, um, uh, great questions, you know, so dude, I'll, I'll type some stuff in for you, uh, but what should I type in? Um, uh, I kind of, I, I know a little bit about what the, the newsletter is going to look like. I don't know a lot. It's going to change probably mm -hmm. a bunch. Um, but what I was hoping for, um, and I don't think we have any examples yet, but there's, there is a headline and one or two mm -hmm. sentences, um, sentence or two, nothing longer than a short paragraph. Um, so, uh, I don't know that Jack has got stuff that he's actually added here as, but, but this is a pretty good, you know, there's a conversation about, about, uh, PKM in whatever channel tools for tech tools and technology or whatever. That's kind of about long enough. Um, uh, while, while I'm here, uh, what's going on in the foot in Flotilla land? That we, that we might, um, we're having conversations about, um, we're interested in. I could go back to our notes. So when they posted a presentation, what I was wondering is, was there that meeting recorded? Uh, yes, um, and I only downloaded it to this morning and I didn't upload it because my computer crashed. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having it too, actually. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a practice, um, would the newsletter include links to the past, you know, the, the past issue periods, meetings? Yeah. Well, for uh, biweekly Plex Dispatch or something else? Yeah. Well, biweekly you know if 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 there were you know three ogm related meetings would they be you know i, I would rather it's a really uh, good question i would rather link off to the collected collected meetings or to a page on ogm that says here's all right. meetings or something like that um i'm not really interested in it turning into a um uh, a directory in and of itself except like a directory to directories um Vincent and I have talked a little bit. He can do a cool thing with Trove where he can um, collect like all the new links, for instance, from right, the right. past couple of weeks. So that's a little bit different because it's not, you know, that's like all, you know, that that one is different. But if I could, if I could point to a, a set of meetings rather than each meeting, I'd rather do that. Yeah. Um, Wait, so you mean like the prod, the group page on Trove that then people could link out to the each event, that kind of thing? Um, the, the question is, um, hang on just a second. I'm going to um, push last week's meeting notes while I'm halfway through it. Um, when you, what, what was the question exactly? It sounded like, well, it started with Michael asking, you know, what kind of Michael, links. Michael asked, a, Michael asked it in OGM um, land, uh, which, which is easier for me to think of because we've got, so anyway, um, bi-weekly newsletter, you could, you know, actually Michael, now, now that I think about it, um, uh, the, the bi-weekly newsletter, it's meant to have news for the past two weeks. This one is going to be special because it's, you know, I, I want to cover all of January. Um, so I could actually have links to each OGM meeting in January or over the past two weeks, you know. Um, uh, but I wouldn't have links for the last four meetings that go back to December or something like that, if that makes sense. Um, so last week we were talking about connection and appreciation and the only real notes were what I 
post pasted in. And then the one before that was kind of more interesting. I guess, so we should talk about, um, uh, so the, the flotilla news is something like, uh, we're talking about having um, uh, multilateral um, uh, help sprints, maybe design sprints, help sprints, whatever. So that would be an th interesting thing to share with the rest of the community. Um, uh, this is the wrong way to say it, but I'm going to write this down unless somebody can say something better real quick. And then I'll rewrite it later. So is somebody new, I hear some terms thrown around that maybe just some definitions like what is clam bake and what, what is flotilla yeah. now? Yeah, things like that. And maybe just a summary of that event that you presented at, that Wendy presented. Um, thanks, Eric. That's super helpful. I, I kind of noted those down. Um, yeah, one of the things I was thinking too is a is a um, the addition of like if we're starting to create a format or a template for how we want people, you know, what kind of information we want to include with each tidbit. Um, maybe a contact, some you know, just if you yeah, have a project of something like this is if you're interested, this is the person to talk to, or this is you know, this is a yep. plate, right? Something yep. else, not just links out to like this is the source or this is the reference, but also this is the person, right? Who to ask more questions of or to connect with. And so in that sense, uh, my 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 idea was actually to collapse it just to the the contact pretty much. You know, um, Flotilla is working on X, Y, Z, blah, 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 and not link to any of those things specifically, but to say, for more details, check the channel and, or, you know, contact somebody. Um, the whole newsletter thing, by the way, it's, you know, a lot of it is pushing the, I mean, it's because we haven't gotten around to, to doing, and it's, it's pushed the community to keep track of itself better. Um, so kind of like I'm doing right now, I'm not doing a very good job of it, but it's like, yo, Flotilla, what, what's going on, you know? Um, and, you know, we, we're gonna have to, Flotilla is gonna have to figure out how to answer that every two weeks because Pete's gonna come and bug it. <laughs> and then and then somebody at Flotilla is gonna go, oh, wow, I could just put this on a web page, you know, and then Pete can find it there, but then other people can find it, you know, and he doesn't have to bug us. So, um, Flotilla obviously is a is that's not going to be hard or, or weird for Flotilla, but you know um, having OGM grow that kind of discipline is going to be useful. Um, another thing, by the way, I I don't know how obvious it was, but I put something. Um, uh, I'm kind of mixing experiments a little bit here, but um, I'm going to have a price for the newsletter. I'm going to say the price is one dollar, um, or whatever you want to pay, including zero. Um, uh, and one dollar isn't ob obviously. I hope I hope it's obvious that it's not enough to cover costs, um, but it's it's not zero. <laughs> Crucially, so it starts the conversation of like. I, and I think I, I expect at least half the people are going to go a dollar. I'm not going to pay a dollar for crap. I'm not even going to load the page because I don't know what Pete has set up. Um, and I, I and I'm fine with that. Um, uh, the whole point isn't to make money. The whole point is to start conversations about um, uh, community economy and uh, value transfer and that kind of stuff. And and a lot of the first conversations are going to be um, it's stupid. We shouldn't have to do that thing. What happened to um, what happened to open sharing? What happened to blah blah blah? And it's like that's all conversation I want. Um, even even the parts that are going to be unpleasant. Is is the one dollar or whatever per installment or a subscription per, per issue? I think. Okay. And and actually, it's a good question because the the next questions are are 
crap, Peter, I don't have to, I don't want to have to figure out how to pay you a dollar or whatever. Maybe I'm going to pay you $10, but I don't want to figure or 50 cents. I don't want to figure that out every two weeks. Right. Can we set up a subscription thing where I just pay you a year in advance? Can I, you know, again, not really pleasant experimentation stuff, but, you know, stuff that, I, you know, we need to figure out. You can do the, uh, the uh, what is it? It's inboard model, which is, it's a subscription is, an issue is a dollar now and a subscription for a year is $10 now. But um, each person who buys a subscription will pay slightly more than the person before them. You know, <laughs> then it will be 11, 12, I mean, not, not even, Pinboard does it by pennies, I think. Yeah, but it's kind of great. So you always know you're getting the best possible price by subscribing <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I hadn't, I hadn't, uh, I do like the, um, it's a dollar, a dollar a month or $10 for a year. I like the, 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 that discount. I haven't seen the, the increasing thing. That one's cool. But I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, another thing. Oh, go ahead. yeah. Another thing I was sure I was muted. Um, another thing to consider too, is letting the community know, like, as of the third one, I'm going to start, you know, doing this, I'm going to start charging. And the advantage to keeping it free for a while, for a while is for the community to see itself and to help create a document that it values, right. So that they want to pay for it. Right. So that they see the value. What do you think about that? Um, it's a good suggestion and not what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's totally fine. <laughs> um, uh, if, uh, well, I, actually there's there, the, the one big problem with that is um, uh, since, uh, since web one, 1 1.5, web two, whatever, um, we kind of accidentally fell into the um, it's free until it's not model. Um, so people just expect that now, right? It's, it's oh, it's gonna be free for a little while and then it's gonna turn into, you know, and th there's a whole bunch of weird dynamics about that. Um, um, uh, the, the other thing is I don't, I, the, I, well, I, I think, I think three months or three issues or whatever is isn't going to be enough for the community to really develop. I, I don't I don't think the community is going to be very participatory for a while. Um, so uh, I in in my head I've kind of signed up for you know I'm I'm going to slog through a bunch of a bunch of it basically for six months or whatever, um, and do a lot of the a lot of the heavy lifting and I'm fine with that. In which case, setting an expectation early is beneficial. Yeah, and so re what I really want to do is set the expectation early. You know, set the flag first and mm -hmm. have all the nasty conversations about it. You know, from the very beginning and mm -hmm. whatever. Stacy, what about if it's free if you contribute and that motivates people to come and put it? You know, put it in the, the, in the Google Docs for you. Yeah, the um, uh, if you look at the chat, um, the way. And this is, I, I could change the, the wording of this. Um, the price is $1. And I even spell this funny because we're going to be doing more crypto stuff this year. Um, price is $1 or your choice of amount, even zero. And uh, choice of, you know, I've stumbled over this wording. Um, uh, it, it's totally in bounds. I'm going to have to reword this, make it better. It's totally in bounds for someone to say, hey, I'm contributing. Um, and that's my, you know, that's the value exchange that I've got going with you, Pete. Is that okay? Um, and I hope I can actually express the, the fact without even that question. Um, yeah, because for only a dollar, I don't know that anybody would even say that. You know, I think anybody that was willing to contribute is going to say, you know, they're going to think, I'm not going to be so petty to not give the dollar. <laughs> um, uh so the, the fact for this is going to be very interesting to build. Um, and thanks for helping me get, get it started. So that's a, a great fact, uh, Stacey. Thank you.
Um, I and it's funny the oh he's only asking for a dollar I'm just going to give it to him without even worrying about it. and I'm going to do other stuff. The another way to think about it that some people are going to do and I think I would think this more. It's like crap only a dollar I can't do that every two weeks. It's just too much overhead for me to think through. Um, you know so. Tell you what, Pete, I'm going to give you $10 now. And then I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to remember again, hopefully, you know, by the time it's, you know, my $10 has kind of run out. I wish I had the community currency set up by now, too. We could have that, although I, it's probably better that it's not because pulling that into this conversation is just going to be even noisier. Well, it would be good, especially if everybody got a certain amount of dollars given to them right away, and then that was one place they could spend it. Yeah, that's really true. Yes, that's the thing I I, I wish I would set up for. Um, uh, there was we had that so so switching topics a little bit. Uh, the OGM call on Wednesday. Was it, I guess it was Wednesday talking about um, sense making? No, it was the Thursday call. Um, Wednesday was Wednesday was on sense making. Um, Thursday had, uh, we got into a bit of a riff about that, that turned into that, that ended up in a riff about interoperability. Um, so Michael said some amazingly smart things in chat. Um, and, um, John, um, John went on a pretty long riff about, you know, when we're capturing all this stuff and annotating it and transcribing it and linking it and stuff like that, you know, there's, he described um, what some, some of us would want to build six months from now or 12 months from now, um, once we start being able to do um, a little bit of crabbing. I'm going to use the weird verb that Jerry and I have. Um, sense making in sense making recording, knowledge facilitating, uh, one call. Um, if you can do that in one format, maybe maybe Pete's doing it into a massive wiki. Somebody else is doing it into a Miro. Somebody else is doing it into Trove and Factor, and then all of those things are all linking up together, and you can like go between them and stuff like that. Um, John did a pretty good pitch for that product. Um, just like, wouldn't it be cool yeah, if you could? And I, I kind of said, that's exactly what we're building, even though we didn't really know that that's what we were building. So, um, hey, Michael, you're muted. Now we can kind of finally see. Sorry. Start. I'm just uh, making everybody seasick by trying to set up a jerry rigged. Um, my, my Wi-Fi seems to have gone out, so I'm on my phone. Um, so other things we should talk about this call? Yeah, I wanna say thank Bill for putting in his stuff on my tapestry sheet. And anybody else who wants to, I can put the link in. Um, I'm starting, just giving an update, I'm starting to build out a questionnaire on, I tried to do it on Typeform and it's too limited because um, trying to get a piece, one piece of information from a questionnaire into a sector that has, or a cell that has an X, Y, and Z axis is hard to create a, a questionnaire for because I need to have cross-referencing, you know, and, and Typeform really can't do that. So I was in a conversation with Jonathan Sand and he said, you know, you really should just build it on Bubble.io. And I went, okay, that's not really my thing. And he's like, that's okay, I'll teach you. And in 30 minutes, he had me inside Bubble.io creating all the tables and the charts and stuff. So, um, so I think that's what he and I are going to be doing over the next couple of weeks is creating that questionnaire so that it's not, you're not looking at an Excel spreadsheet. You're looking at it. You can just walk through a conversational tone of a questionnaire and fill out some answers like you would if you were sitting next to somebody on a couch kind of thing. And then it shows you at the end, the, the, where, where it all fits in. So, and then allows you to see 
how it fits in among uh, the groups that you're already a part of or, and that's where it's exciting that it's bubble IO because then we can integrate with Trove and then all the information we know about those people in Trove, we can let them layer and filter and we'll see how far that we can get with this project and have it still have a nice user interface and make some sense. <laughs> so, but I think I'm excited because it does feel like something that can happen in within a month instead of something that needs to take, you know, six months planning and, you know, another year dev time and, you know, or whatever that is. So um, that's where I'm at with that. But if people think it would be fun to put stuff in the tapestry and just even see where we are as a group of flotilla members, then we could start there. It's certainly helpful to me to see what kinds of things people want to put in, what kinds of notes they make. It'll help me create the right fields and cells and um, sectors and all that kind of stuff as I start to build this out. So certainly helpful to me to do that. Penny, did you get enough? Did you get to demo enough last week? Do you want to do another demo this week? Um, I could definitely re, you know, bring up the presentation again. I think I went, you had to drop off. Mostly, I think, mostly right? yeah. So, and I haven't watched the, the video yet, but I wonder if you've demoed the grid. Um, not so much. Um, the, the why don't I just bring just... that? Why don't I just bring that up if that serves people? And let's just walk through that instead of doing it from the perspective of the presentation. I'll um, mm -hmm. just bring up the grid and we can just walk it through. Okay. Um, Bill, is that okay if we? You've got a hand up, so. Yeah, walking through the grid would be useful because I'd I'd like to see where we're going to go next. Be, just because of my own experience of well there's two things my experience of thinking about how to put what i want to put in there and then two is working with the spreadsheet which is just after a while a nightmare just complicated potatoes with just trying to put text and carriage returns and all this other word tomorrow right so yeah um okay i feel like i was going to do something in between between sharing, but now I can't remember what it was. Okay. Oh, I was going to put the link in the chat. Would people like me to do that so you can actually go there? Yes. And I think it's open, openly shared. Um, uh, I get back to, I'm sorry, I have to stop sharing to get back to the chat. There you go. Thank I'll you. share again. And if you're all in there and you'd prefer me not sharing because you're looking at it anyway, however, your desktop is like, like speak, speak if that's serving better than somebody tell me. Um, so anyway, um, basically I'm trying to say, take the ball of yarn and spread it out, right? Like pull it apart. Or another way to describe it is, you know, say we have a million puzzle pieces and we have no grid, you know, to, to start to figure out where our pieces might go means we just were kind of throwing them in the middle every now and then or showing them to one other person and kind of trying to figure out how in the world we fit together. And so the idea for me was to start to, to create an X and Y axis. So the stages across the top and the sectors down the side in a way that starts to spread things out in a way people can identify themselves in ways that, that, that mean something to them and that the community can start to see. And obviously it's important. Um, one of the things I was trying to figure out was it's important to come up with a, with a holistic framework so that what's going down the side or going across the top is, in, is trying its best to encompass a whole, not just look at one little part. That doesn't mean we couldn't, to Bill's question, you know, and, 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 and kind of where this is going is zoom in in one, one cell and get a, you know, and there'd be ways to do that too in, in my mind. But for right now, I think this is a good first step just even to like tease some things apart and get a better look at things. So across the top um, are really just stages of how things come into the world. It's divergent thinking versus convergent thinking. It's exploring things and, and then applying things. It's researching things and then figuring out how to bring those things into the world. It's that kind of thinking I was in conversation with a couple of people over a course of a couple of days. And it kept popping up as a way to recognize that there are a lot of projects working in one area or another and not often in both. And so I thought it was a good way to kind of tease things apart. 
And then the, down the, so that's across the top and down the side, I just chose the Barbara Marks Hubbard's Wheel of Co-Creation because I thought it was a really great framework, holistic framework for all the sectors of society. So if we're trying to get, trying to solve problems around society, it just helps us see, oh, really, I'm working on a problem that really is about media, or I'm working on a project that's really trying to further education, or I'm working, right, to just help us understand where our piece resides, and then also as a community to see, oh, as a community, this is where we reside. And then for everyone to see, oh, this is where the holes are, particularly if we start to try to use it to solve problems, then we're really, I think it, it has another layer of value if we say put projects or potential solutions in here. And then we can see that really we're solving something that sits inside of two sectors and we haven't heard the voices from five others. And maybe that would be valuable to hear voices and get input from five others of the sectors before we move forward. Or maybe it's really, we realize, hey, we're actually really good at emerge this emerging this idea. And there are three other organizations working on applying it already. Maybe we should talk to them, figure out what they've learned before we, um, before we try to apply our, our idea. So it, things like that, all these questions start and, and opportunities start to come up from having placed it in this way. At least that's my hope. Right? If that doesn't happen and all it is is a repository, to me, we've missed an opportunity because to me, it would be the best if it was a living, breathing document where people could go back to their profile and change where, what their pieces are according to what they're working on now um, and, and how it relates to their community. It would be a shame if it was just even that piece, and it didn't say get used by communities to ask themselves these questions. It's really a platform for, for communities and people to see themselves better so that they can decide what next step to take. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so Bill did a great job, it looks like, of putting himself into the grid. Well, at least it looks that way to me. Um, did, do you think he did a good job? Yeah, I, I think what's the other thing that I'm liking as I play with this, and I and when I sent uh, when I did the post on on Mattermost, I tried to clarify too. To me, it's not about whether. Let me let me say this differently. I think there's an opportunity here to flip some expectations on their head where. Um, a lot of times in technology, because of the way development has had to work so far, we've had to figure out the ontology first and then try to educate people about what categories and systems they're working within so that then they can use them in that way that we've designed them. And, um, and I'm trying to do a little bit of the opposite here where it doesn't really matter if you've got it right. There's no right. It's more about, do you feel like you found a spot that at least for the moment feels like a good representation of what you're doing. Um, and that's good enough because at least it's throwing the puzzle piece in generally the right direction. And the value isn't that it's in exactly the right spot. The value is in seeing who else shows up in that area and whether that, that connection and that potential sense-making and that potential opportunity bears fruit for you. So to me, it's, it's, you know, it, we haven't done it. I haven't done a good job with the framework. If people, if we get enough information in each cell and people are going, this doesn't, this doesn't have any value. Like I'm not finding anything here. Then the frameworks, then I've got the wrong framework, you know, and in which case it would be a discussion about changing the framework. Um, if we get funding uh, projects, resources, people's expertise, people's interests all in one cell, and they are seeing that there's, ooh, I didn't know this person was interested in this area. I didn't know this resource existed for this topic. And they do start to find some meaning. Then we're on, in my opinion, we're on the right track. So the um, question's really not for me, the question's for Bill. <laughs> Did Bill feel like he had a relatively easy experience I, putting I, himself in? Yeah. I. That, that's actually kind of like the semantic question. I'm actually just asking the, the syntax question. Okay. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, just, just mechanically, um, 
uh, it's he did a cool job. He did a cool thing by annotating annotating his his entry in that cell, um, mm -hmm. and hopefully that's something that you were either hoping to see or or um, happy to see. Um, so then I'm I'm also thinking the next thing, uh, like. Um, uh, row three media and column three applying concepts manifesting um, he's got himself listed twice one under e and one under p and mm -hmm. i think that's a really interesting thing um and then i guess the next one down he did ie um ie um together mm -hmm. yeah um, that's exactly what i was expecting to happen and maybe bill was getting some of that from the instructions that i put on mattermost yeah. about it okay. too is that in the end, my ideal, at least for this step, user interface would, would be um, the little icons that represented all the E's, all the I's, all the P's, all the C's, yeah. all that, right? And so as a group, you would first just see a bunch of, a bunch of little icons in a cell, right? So that would represent as many people as wanted to put in an E, as many, as many I's as there are, right? And so you would see pretty quickly that there's a lot in one cell or not. I, again, ideally in my mind, I'm going, you could hover over it and it would pop up like the person's name or it'd pop up their little, their little whatever so that it wouldn't get so text heavy and it would yeah. be a little more visually appealing and, and, and make it easier to sense make. So um, yes, you could put as many E's, I's, C's, however you want, wherever you want, whatever makes sense to you. Okay. So that's exactly what I was hoping for. So then when we go in and add ourselves, it's on a separate line in the cell, same line? I would do matter. this. Yeah, don't put it, don't create a new row because I just think that'll be messy. But if people are finding that the only way to do it is to create a new row, then create a new row. Like we'll fit, I'll clean it up later. Do what okay. works for you, um, but inside the same cell and just keep typing is fine. If you want to try and clean up the formatting for me, fine. If you don't want to deal with that, fine. Because <laughs> okay. this is where just it's going to be messy at the beginning here, and I understand that, and I'm happy to do the work it takes to um, to move things along in this in this in between stage. Yep. Yeah. So let let me. So one problem I ran into right before this call or earlier this morning is I wanted to add something in a row where. Wendy had something, and I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I just, I'm looking, I'm in this Google Doc. I'm typing, I'm like, I, I really want to put a carriage return in. I'm like, I, like, I, yeah. and I just got, I'm like, I can't. So I, how, so I gave it up at the time. I'm like, all right, this. So and I, yeah. I just want to yeah. go back to what Wendy said. I figured out how to use this. I mean, I looked at what you, what you posted. I read through it. I didn't really go back to it. I just okay. stared, at, stared at this table. Mm -hmm. I read the definitions. I looked at what you did. I looked at the key and I decided, hmm, okay, let me try and enter things. Perfect. I think, you know, that I could use these keys, these columns and these rows. That's all I, that's all I did. And yep. then I added comments because, I, you know, I think just to make it more specific. Yes, I, I found myself wanting to add notes as well. And in a couple spots I did, yep. So I thought that was, I think that's great. And I think it's necessary. I think it'll actually help people, especially if you if you have something really specific because in the end, these these even, even though I'm teasing apart into 12 or 13 sectors, there's still a lot of room for a lot of different angles on each one. So I think if people have a, a certain leaning, it helps to put a note. And one thing I, I'm noticing, and I, I don't know if it's something you can format around, but if, if you are a second person, like I'm just going to media and trying to put myself into a cell where Bill already is as another person mm -hmm. um, and a return or, a, or either a shift return or a hard return takes me out of the cell. Right. Yeah. You can, it's, it. it's easy to get a carriage return in a cell if you want. Um, yeah. It's control return or alt return or Command return or something like that. Yeah, one see, of I, was, I, I was trained by Manimo, so I tried shift return and that didn't work. And I'm like, all right. Um. 
Yeah. I mean, another way to do this too, if, if it seems like there's a bunch of other people in there and it's just messing with you is you could make a copy, another, another tab at the bottom. If you know how to do that, just create your own. Um, and I can worry about pulling it all together. That's also okay with me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think, if you I think a semicolon did. between is fine. Like Bill sure. and you know, that semicolon would work. I, my fingers did it without me thinking about it. I, I think I did control or turn. Yeah, it is control. I just discovered it. All right. Back, yeah. okay. okay, I'm going to put right. that above. The yeah, other... That would help. I think it would be better, Wendy, if people just like overburden the cells with text <laughs> rather than just creating new rows or extra. That, because that'll me make too. it. No, so just, you know, if the text, if the thing gets super, super big because everybody's got like, hey, you know, I was a student once. I know something about education, or I believe I do. You know, um, it'll get really big. So, 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 Bill, that's a vote for not having internal character turns. No, that's having internal character turns. Oh, okay, yeah. But just yeah, keep yeah. adding rather than add another tab or another row because just no, just well, the, I yeah, clearly you don't want to you don't want to make more cells. But there's a choice for me between semicolon space and character turn. I would go for carriage returns. Okay. That's, yeah, that's I, would, I would prefer carriage returns. Now that we figured out what that is, I put it above the key so we'll all remember. Yes, I think um, that's better. And I actually folded each of these cells when I got, I went into the format and said fold, wrap the text yeah, because it wasn't yeah. wrapping. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's weird. It should they should all wrap. I'll change that right now. I'll just redo the cell struct, the cell format to make sure. There, there's, I think Bill's got it already, right? Did you already? Fix them? I only did it on the ones I was in. So. Yeah, so I just did it on all the other, all of them, just to make yeah. sure. It should have been that way, but because this allows it to get really big, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Which allows I it think, to grow. Yep. Yeah. Kind of an aside, Wendy Elford and I were working, she had a, a grid project, uh, not as not as detailed as this, but she was using grids to organize um, a user manual and I was help, writing some code to help her extract it. She literally had like a whole user manual page in each cell <laughs> and, <laughs> and she didn't pull her air out. I would, have, I, I would have just like exploded. It's like, I can't tell what's going on, but she was doing a pretty good job of it. And then, she found out that, um, you know, we were doing markdown processing in it, you know, and so she started doing markdown inside the cells and it's like, wow. No, wow. that's the future, man. We're going to build documents and tables because like, what? We're humans. It, it worked <laughs> amazingly well, um, except, the, except when it, well, two, the, the, the one place it broke down was when she got more than I don't know, a couple hundred lines in a cell. That was, it, it started to break down. And then the other thing that broke down was she had a colleague, um, a, kind of a management person who she was collaborating with. She would copy the whole text out of a cell, put it in a separate Google doc so that he could make comments and stuff. And then she would like fix all the comments and put it back in the cell. That was crazy. So I put a question in the chat eventually would each cell become a page in a wiki and could, maybe that could be done up front? Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I for, for me, that. it's like, right, or links to, um, you know, like, projects could have a project page and people could have a profile page and, right? So I imagine a profile, if, if there's a community using something like this, I can imagine everyone's profile, including what they've, what the pieces are that they put in to the grid. So anytime they're at their profile, if they want to make a change, they can make a change. So instead of just listing interests, it would it help them see what segments they've put their stuff in um, and give them a chance to link out to something if they wanted to. And then that would appear in the cell and vice versa, right? It would take people back to their profile. Um, yes. Do you feel like I was saying the same thing as you or something different? Do we have a technology that we already have for wikis that we could use? Um, um, I I have things that are reasonably close in massive wiki and, and in like the Wendy Elford stuff, I've got a bunch of code that turns grid-like things into wikis. Yeah, like if you just link to a page and then we could just... 
my ideas down. My guess is the next step is actually bubble. Um, because I, I think you want <clears throat> um, I, I think you want better UX than than you can get out of a link to a wiki page. Mm. Okay. So does bubble allow you to have a backlink to the bubble? Like yes, and create, you can create bubbles and you can create, create yes. like a page template. So a page template could be um, a sector, and then you can pass a parameter to that page, which is like the um, the stage and the person, and then it'll create that page, right? Combining the information from those different variables, however you want it. Uh, well, okay, that's, I think, I was just thinking that picking up what Eric said, I was just thinking if we're gonna go with wikis, we would like the two-way links. I point to this and when I'm on that page, here's a, you know, by the way, one of the things that I came from is over here. Yeah, I was talking to Jonathan about making sure that I set up the database structure and um, tables in a way that will allow for bi-directional links. As I start to build this out, um, and so you know that's what he and I have been working on with his Seriously app too. To so I think this is for me. This is a simpler version of what I've been imagining as the UI UX in my head anyway, which requires bi-directional links. To, so to your point, Bill, you know, I might start with a topic of economics and land on Bill Anderson and then realize that it's part of this stage and then, right, like, so, and then circle back around and that's economics again. And, you know, or it might come at Bill from a different place. Like Bill is actually connected to like six or seven different sectors, right? So it's, it's being able to kind of navigate it in any direction I want. We're just happening to show it as a grid because that's functionally possible right now. But, um, but I want it to be, be organized in a way that if we wanted to show it in a Kumu map, we could, if we wanted to show it in other ways, we could and allow the navigation to flow in the way that you were just suggesting. I'm very grateful for a group like this because I can say that and I conceptually understand it and I can see it in my mind's eye and I have absolutely no idea how to do it. So, <laughs> so that's where, that's why this is so useful for me and getting into bubble IO for me too um, is, is good for me to start learning um, and working with other people who know how to use that and see what we can do along those lines. Okay, I have a question for the group because it just popped up for me. So this is a free association. I'm looking at this thing. I was listening to what Wendy said and the phrase topic map popped into my head. So the question is where, which, for an interest in that, which, where would that go? Which sector does that belong in? I'm just asking a question. I have, I have an answer, but I would cheat. Oh, topic maps. I, I, I thought the opposite. I, I, I jumped to the conclusion that you were asking, how would you represent this in topic maps, which is another interesting question. Uh, maybe I was also, I don't know what's going on in the other part of my brain right now. So that's possible. And, and I have an answer for that, but it's a, it's a pointer, not a real answer. It's like ask Jack Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Mark Antoine, I get it. But um, um, I just- The topic maps, you... is, that's a good one, yeah. Do you mean you you have a topic map that you would want to share with a community and where would you put it? No, if um, you look, if you go, go scroll down in this, the sectors that are like where I put the stuff about informatics. I mean, generally thinking I would put topic maps in the world of informatics. Oh. Or, you know, where the science of information or information science. Yep. Broadly speaking. And I put that stuff where did I put it? I put it somewhere. I know I had. Yeah, I put it in media because that's the only word. That's the only place I found anything that seemed, you know, oh yeah, relevant. Yeah. But I don't, uh, you know, I I, I, I just I threw it a, there. I have a a similar um, angst um, because because I'm playing around with. Um, uh, currency and signaling via ledgers, essentially ledgers and, and currency and signaling that way. And that would go under economics, but it's not economics. It's not finance. 
Um, well, so does it go in two places? The same thing could appear in two places. The, the, if the point is to connect with other people who are to not only be seen by the community that this is something that you're doing, in which case it could go anywhere, really, you know, to a certain it, degree. It could go in but relations. But also trying to connect with other people who might be interested in the same topics or interested in pursuing solutions in that in that in that it segment. In, it feels like it could also go in governance. Yeah. Or governance would be a great place. So <laughs> right. I mean, so, so I think what you're saying, Wendy, is like just put it in. Right. Okay, Start by putting it in. And if you really can't decide, put it in two places. There's nothing wrong with putting it in two places. Yeah. Okay. I would just put topic max into science now, now that I'm looking at it again. Science okay. is good. Since you just said, you did whatever was just said here, it's a branch of information science, which has got, you know, the science word in it. Mm -hmm. so. I, I think it fits in science. And, and it could also fit someplace else, if you, what, depending what you're using the topic map for. It could fit in media. Or, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to note real quick, uh, over in column D and row three, um, Michael had put factor and then the URL, and you can combine those. So it's cool that he put a link in, and you can fold the link into one thing. Um, I do that with command K. I don't know how to do it otherwise. For a moment, <laughs> I thought, wow, this is really cool. It's set up so that this, and then I thought, I bet Pete did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. We're going to have to have a special, you know, control all P. What the, that's Pete mode. You just run that on the table. <laughs> All right, and then I did this with this bottom part, thinking of our one of our first conversations, Pete, about, okay, can we share this, right? Is this shareable outside of the flotilla community, right? And so this technically is flotilla's tapestry. So, you know, am I okay sharing it with OGM? Am I okay sharing it even wider than that now? From, from a UX perspective, my ideal would be that each piece, you know, in your profile, you would be allowed to decide this piece yeah. is like, I'm, I'm just sharing with this tight community, you know, you would be allowed, we don't have that <laughs> capability right now, but I thought it was at least wise to start the thinking process and say, you know, no, I really just want my stuff. So you got to kind of decide for all of your stuff right now, yeah. whether it's just for this or just for flotilla which is an assumed, I'm assuming it's just for flotilla unless you put your name there, which I should probably, uh, put, I'm not saying yes to no, sorry. On line 23, uh, line 24, so you can, gotcha. or 26. Um, so I'm now just adding, I just realized like I, I asked the question. But I yes. Yeah, oh, thank you, yes. Um, and then you can either add it to the line, you can put your name in a new cell, um, whatever. And I think that's just valuable, um, right? That so as we build this out, the, those of us who are trying to um, share this will know how far we can share your stuff. Um, uh, a line above 23, I, I think you should put another line in that says something yeah. like, by default, this is only shared with Flotilla. Excellent. I, I, I appreciate your care with this. Um, and I kind of wonder actually if, if the flotilla, I think the flotilla people are all pretty much CC by kind of people. Maybe I'm wrong. So <laughs> mm -hmm. again, or I, what well, I, since, uh, so, so pretty much a lot of stuff that I share, and I know Bill is like this too, a lot of stuff is uh, CC BY, um, Creative Commons uh, Attribution. And so, so I yeah. really appreciate it. I just, I just didn't understand CC BY when you said it. I, I, I appreciate yeah. that Wendy's being careful with this. And the way I would have done it is like, everything in here is CC BY. If you don't want to put stuff in here, don't. <laughs> <laughs> we can just, I think that's a decision we can make as a group. 
again, right? Well, sometimes it's it's really good to be modeling um, more fine grained uh, contribution stuff. And thankfully, uh, you and I and us have Vincent to kind of handle this kind of stuff, where he's already thinking through that kind of uh, granularity and, and permission stuff uh, in Airtable and Bubble and, and things. So. By the time it needs to be in bubble, you could ask Vincent how to actually do that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm chuckling because, of course, Vincent had a meeting recently. He's like, I don't want to make these decisions. <laughs> like, this is, you know, it's, and that's kind of what you were saying to me too, Pete. Like, this is, it feels uncomfortable to be the one when you create something to then being stuck with, wait a second, am I allowed to share this or not? You both shared that with me. So, that's kind of why I was I, putting well, and and I the way I've resolved that is I just put it up front. You know, uh, it's funny I didn't put this on the biweekly inbox, but I should have. But anyway, it's like if you're going to type something here, it's CC by. I've I've made the decision already. Eric, <laughs> Eric makes a good point in the chat just about like the ramifications, the, the follow-on effects of being public. Um, it is it is a better practice to be more fine grained and more more thought, careful and thoughtful and and where I have fallen down or where I, where I have come to is at, with wiki stuff basically it's like just don't make sure you don't surprise people but then also just make make it so that everything gets shared and that's just the way it works and it does cause problems sometimes there are there are weird things you know. So in what I'm hearing, I want to make sure I'm hearing this right, um, is what I'm hearing that the way I'm framing it right now is the best way to do it in the short term or, or do people feel like a change would be wise? I think it's, I think it's good. Okay. What about, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Vincent, having dealt with this before. I think there is some part of me that wants to say, let's create something in 30 minutes and just test it and see if it works and not have to overthink it if it's gonna be a small experiment and then learn from it and probably figure learn a lot from it really in a really quick period of time. Um, and yeah, I would, I guess um, that, yeah, that, that's, that's my thought right now. But in with, with regard to access, Vincent, are you saying let's let's do this, you know, default shared with Flotilla only thing where we're not worrying about further access and then talk about that later? What are you saying in well, relation? Well, depending on the artifact that we're creating, like how likely is it going to get <laughs> outside of this group is kind of part of it. But yeah, I think by default, um, it should be up to the person I think shared only with Flotilla is, is an easy container to start with. Yeah. Well, it just means, I mean, there are things like how easy will it get out? Well, if we put it in Plex newsletter, you know, anybody who it's gets out. that, it's out. You know? this, I mean, uh, this, and, this recording is going to be public too. Um, yeah. Not not advertised, but public. So. Right. So, right. It determines whether I make another one for OGM. And then people have to copy their stuff over to that or whether we can share this and invite uh, more people to add to it, right? So. Vincent, you thought the default of only shared with Flotilla is good. Do you also think it's good to have the additional options, share this also with OGM or share it publicly? Or is that over overkill? So how I've been treating privacy for things has been, do you want this to be public? Meaning, are you okay with anyone getting it? Do you want it to be private? Meaning like you want to select only specific people or people in specific groups, or do you want it restricted where it's like only shared within these groups, but then it can kind of, you know, um, in the, in that area, it gets a little fuzzy of like, okay, then what are the rules in which we decide someone's in the group? Is it if they view the OGM recordings on YouTube? Is it right? So then um, the restricted one, which is kind of in the middle is trickier. Um, but I think if you're going to do one tap, Wendy, would it be like one tapestry per person? Or would it be like the tapestry where all of them are kind of overlaid? 
Yeah, it would be a tapestry of for the community. Okay. Where every person um, is overlaid. See, that's when you then get like, okay, if kind of everyone has to agree on the, if, if it's a shared tapestry, then there needs to be like a consensus that everyone who's on it is cool with it being public or, or private, right? So that's kind of um, where I think. Separately, and, and this is not gonna make any of the developers happy, but uh, you could understand who's looking at it and Correct. filter everything that they're not supposed to be able to see out, right? Yes, or yeah, so if, let's Once say uh, uh, yeah. there's, there's five, six of us here, Right, so ideally I would look, I mean, in this rudimentary form, I would look at lines 25 and 27, right? And say, who's who's put their name on that line, right? If your name's not on that line, if I were to share this with OGM, I would manually delete your name. I would make a copy for flow, you know, for, for OGM and I would delete the names of the peop of people who are not on lines 25 and 27 or 25 for OGM and then share it with OGM then ask more people to put, and then we do the same thing. Would you delete them or replace them with uh, anonymous one, anonymous two, anonymous three? Anonymous would be even better because then at least we there'd be representation of interest or something, but I don't know how valuable that, I mean, I'd be interested just to see the number, you know, the volume there. I don't know how valuable that would be if people can't follow up, if they don't even know what it refers to, I, but if we were- I, I think the volume is a really important signal. I think it is too. Okay. So yes, I would but, put but a- But then there's a, good idea. there's a little bit of like privacy that. stuff too there, you know, it's it, like you could probably like- Figure out who the I guess, person I guess you, you don't want to say anonymous one, anonymous two, anonymous three. You just want to say and three anonymous people. And plus three or something. Yeah. 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 yeah plus three P's or plus three E's or plus three I's, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I think it would be a longer question to talk about what the right like structure would be, but if each if each answer is a like a response, you can have a privacy permission based on the answer. And then people could kind of decide for each thing, each thing that they answer, if they say something that's more like intimate, they can only share it with some people so you can have the privacy instead of at like the layer of the whole person and all their responses, it could be at the layer of each response. Yeah, and and you might've missed me when I said that earlier, like that would be the ideal. That's just not yeah. what I have on an Excel spreadsheet. That's just too crazy, right? So I was trying to make it more global. So for right now, it's all your responses, but I agree with you. As I was filling it out, I was thinking, oh, I would share this piece with this group, but not necessarily with that group of people in my life, you know? so. Um, it's about people's comfort, like giving people a sense of comfort level and, and what they're sharing in with whom. Um, or maybe it's just relevance too, you know, it can be just about relevance. Yeah. Um, okay. So since we're all here, do, I'm encouraging people to go to line 25 or 27, if you have it open, or if you want to open it, the link was in the chat and put your name in or tell me, and I will put your name in. Um, if you're okay sharing it outside, you do not have to say it right now. Like I'm in, in, in efforts to protect your privacy, you can do it later, but, um, but that would be nice to get some names in there. If, uh, just to, again, start the process of, of knowing, um, and being sensitive to your privacy. And I think I'm gonna stop sharing because I feel like we've gotten to the point where I think we can, as far as we can go for the moment. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, Wendy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool, thank you. Are there other flotilla business? Or I'm more gonna I'm going to have to hop off early today. Um, I just want to share one thing like for like a minute really quick. Um, this Sunday, for anyone who's interested, there's going to be a um, design science studio um, showcase. So all the projects for everyone who's in the design science studio are going to be, or about 60 of them are going to be sharing. Um, and the event is hosted on Trove, which is why I haven't had sleep. Um, <laughs> so um, the schedule is really cool. I've been building out this um, 
I'll send you guys the link if anyone's interested in attending. Um, but this is the once you like RSVP, then you get sent to the Trove page. And um, I've been working on the like one having like a featuring section on the event page. So you can click on any one of the um, any one of the presenters and then like you can have a video trailer of the presentation and then there's a presentation page for each person. So like um, you can have your own little like page that you can share on social media and stuff to like advertise the event. Um, and then there's also a fancy event agenda where you can look at the kind of <laughs> timeline of all the events happening um and then each one will like take you to the the link as soon as it's ready um and you can filter these by like art you know like the topic and also by the the stage or like the session category um and there's certain ones that have uh like videos previews as well for the sessions so yeah this has been a lot of fun um and also a lot of work but yeah i'll um, it's going to be a really cool event, so I'd love to have you guys there. I'll be presenting on ontologies and this map behind me. It's a very pretty map. Um, yeah, are you going to announce it publicly? Like, It's this Sunday, this coming Sunday. You muted, you muted Vincent. Yes, it's this coming Sunday, and it is, this is the public. Um, oh, actually, it's not the event link. Hold on. Oh, actually, yeah, it'll take you to the event link. So yeah, that's the um, um you, you'll post it to Town Square and uh, the OGM list and wherever else. Yeah, and yeah. You schedule it, and you spec scheduled it especially so it's um goes from uh kickoff of the first NFL conference championship game <laughs> to the final gun of the second one so you can make sure there will be no football uh, uh, oh yeah no one from uh regenerative eco villages are going to be watching them <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm, i didn't even know that was happening all venn ben diagram of people who uh, who watch nfl football and <laughs> so I've, I've got a i've got a tough choice ahead of me <laughs> <laughs> No game. It's really great, no Vincent. Congratulations on doing yeah, such a big event. Yeah. And it looks Thanks, fabulous. Yeah. I love the, all the, oh. the, the, um, your picture and how everyone's done their profiles and it's really, um, engaging, you know, and the way you've out, you, the way Trove is out, you know, is laid it all out too, is very complimentary to the obvious styles that, you know, and, and artistry that they have and that they bring. So it's cool. Yeah, the Habitual Studio, they're awesome with uh, like putting on shows and making everything look amazing. So it was cool working with like someone who actually got like, oh yes, design. <laughs> and they're like, you know, pixel perfect images of every presenter. So it, it was fun. Let's see, I'm gonna hop to that call to go troubleshoot issues. So I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye. It's a hard act to follow, but any other flotilla stuff? I'm curious to circle back to um, uh, blockchain a little bit and interoperability and, you know, where, <laughs> um, where we see things, I, I don't know, I don't know, uh, Pete, if you happen to uh, listen to that, that long. Um, I, I haven't yet. I've been, uh, I've been stealing myself to do it. So. <laughs> I, uh, I will. What? I will. You won't listen to I, it? No, I will. Oh, you will. Okay. I, I, I worry that it's going to be a waste of an hour um, because I'm going to listen to it double speed, but um, but I hope it's not, so maybe it won't be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it seems, and I, I would I would love somebody who is is of more, has has more of a jet an agenda in the other direction to like you know say oh well he totally doesn't understand this you know which you would probably be able to say quickly if it was true 
but you know, I've heard some skeptics who were less credible skeptics in my mind, just from my limited knowledge. Um, but anyway, not to not to get specifically into that. Just just thinking about how um, uh, how smart contracts. I, I was just having a conversation at, before I came here with um, somebody from uh, um, Journalist and Text.txt, which is a, a group <clears throat> that is trying to build. Um, trust networks and standards between journalists and, and journalistic publishing entities and the question of to use blockchain or not to use blockchain and, you know, like some, some big sentiment for smart contracts, yes, blockchain, no, how can we do that? Um, and uh, I'm just, I think, it, I think it's relevant to our efforts. Um, and that's that's that. actually really good. Yeah, that, that's a um, yeah, that's a good topic. Um, it and and avoiding blockchain is is a knee jerk reaction. It, that's not a thoughtful reaction. It's it's not a thoughtful yeah. reaction. Well, I mean, I I think there are people who have a knee jerk reaction to not use blockchain. And I think there can be a thoughtful, you know. Yeah, objection, yeah. Objection. There are lots of times you shouldn't use a blockchain and, and, and people do. Yeah. Um, but even then, I even then, if you've got like a, a, a network between journalists is a good example, and I, I, I shouldn't be, um, pontificating about something I don't know anything about, but um, right. but a network of journalists is a good decentralized situation. And even if you if you said a blockchain, we could use it for this, but it would be clunky, which is a lot of times what you would say. Um, the next thing you'd kind of want to say is let's have a centralized database. Let's also do an experiment with a decentralized database like a blockchain. You know, I, it's it's good to be using blockchains even if they're just experiments and you're not trying to do the, the, the core thing with them. So I mean, are there are there decentralized database bases that aren't blockchains, or is that I mean yeah. that you know I think is that emerging. the only game in town? I think it's part of the question that. I think there's research on it, and it's the technology is just being built, but I don't think it's there yet. It's an alpha, I think. <laughs> and how does Holochain fit into all of it, right? It's basically a different angle in my mind, my, my limited expertise. <laughs> does anybody have any insight there? Proof of stake versus proof of work? Is that the... I, I think that's not a... That's not the differentiator for a holochain. Um, hol holochain is more of a, an, well, I can read it off the, the web title, app framework with peer-to-peer -peer networking. Um, cell phone data, distributed database, and peer accountability. <clears throat> so when you say, I think when you say holochain, um, you are you kind of pull in the, the concepts of distributed execution as well as distributed ledger or distributed database. I, I guess distributed execution, distributed data base. Um, blockchain is usually just distributed ledger and smart contracts sometimes. Um, the, there's a, the, it's funny, one of the things to say into this space is, is really interesting. Um, uh, the, um, water choices panel that Wendy uh, Alford um, moderated and that she and I are making a website for, and it's going to be released, I think, next week, finally. Um, uh, it was hosted by a blockchain company, and um, uh, because blockchain could be something that you would use to to ledger, you know, choices, uh, things about water, agreements about water, you know, so many acre feet here to that person, from this person to that person or whatever. 
Um, you could also use it for recording measurements. You know, uh, we we observe this many acre feet here. We expected that many. You know, there's a difference. Um, the blockchain person. So it was a kind of a lay discussion about water, right? Although it was pretty high level because it was about property rights and and rivers as persons and things, legal persons and stuff like that. Um, but the blockchain person ended up saying some things that she thought would be potentially misconstrued um, by, by a, a larger set of people than folks um, used to, to hearing about blockchain. So I think one of the interesting words was trustless. Um, uh, trustless is a, is a technical um, concept. Um, but if you hear it without enough context, it sounds totally crazy. It's That's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm entering into contracts that are trustless. You know, what's up with that? And so then um, I had a long discussion with Wendy about, you know, how to kind of resolve the, the problems around that. You know, do you, because we're adding, you know, we're adding a bibliography. Do you have a bibliography entry that says, by the way, trustless is a technical term. It doesn't mean what it sounds like it means, you know. Um, but then you have a problem even with that, right? People aren't going to see that that right. um, explanation. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It's like, so why did you say trustless if you don't mean trustless? And you know, all that kind of stuff. Means you know, the trust is in the code. You exactly. Know. Yeah. Meaning you can have trust outside of that, in addition, but you don't yeah. have. To. Yeah. 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 And. And so I, I kind of the net net, uh, not that this is going to happen, but it's, it's one of those things where I wish we could revoke the word and, and republish a better word, you know, just because it's really confusing. It's confusing built enough already. Trust. Built in trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We should have Michael be the editor for the world. <laughs> so. I'm just new to this and I want to just understand like do you have like a short-term vision and a long-term vision for what the tapestry is going to be? Yeah, thanks for the uh, question, Eric. I'm new to this too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this idea basically popped up about three weeks ago. So in my mind, I was really looking to build a user interface that would be, you know, that, that, I realized that the more I talk to people is, is got a lot of um, technical restriction, technical limitations right now to, to building it. And so then I said to myself, okay, well then I'll just create a prototype. So at least we can have a vision of where we're going. And I talked to a couple of people about the prototype and they were like, yeah, the prototype doesn't even really, you know, it doesn't even want, it sounds like what you want is maybe like an AR VR kind of experience. I'm like, oh my God, no, like, so I was in that space when I started going, okay, how can I maybe think about this differently or what am I really trying to do? And I was going back to the root for me uh, that started this whole project is, which is, you know, where are humans at their best and how can we make, help technology, use technology to help us get there? And so I was asking myself questions about uh, wisdom and, you know, and knowledge and, um, and create, you know, being creative and innovative. And so I sat down and I started, I thought I was gonna write something up and I ended up drawing a picture and then the picture inspired me to have a conversation and then the convert, right? And it landed in my, it just landed in my mind. Oh, wow, I think I'm coming up with like an X and Y axis mm -hmm. that could be turned into a grid. So this is me playing, hearing from communities saying, especially in the last six weeks, saying we're done talking about collaborating we want to figure out how to actually collaborate not just in governance but like what is holding us back and in my mind it was already forming of like of of okay we a lot of us kind of see across the river see across the chasm we're talking about where we want to be one day you know, what the betterverse might look like or what economics might look like or what mm -hmm. new justice might look like, but how are we going to get from here to there? Right. And so that's been the, that's been the, 
the, the question in the room. And so I'm trying to say, I think I'm one of those people that tends to be a visionary and I tend to be a weaver. I'm always looking to see the whole system as best as I can. And I'm not personally interested or, or, or feel a burning need to create one piece. I think I realized, you know, and I, I, so I keep backing off as I see that other people have the pieces that actually gets me excited. And instead of feeling like, Ooh, I'm there's competition. Instead I back off more and I go, Ooh, okay. So where else do we have holes and can we fill those in? So this is the way I'm thinking all the time. And I'm trying to say, if, if we can take that kind of framework and help other people see themselves and see where they fit in the community. Now, how do we best do that is, is the question, right? And so I'm proposing the tapestry could be one step towards that. In no way, shape or form do I feel like this, this is a thus best step, nor do I think it will be a step that will stay for very long. I think it will help us all take the next step. And it may be me that implements that step, but it'll be everyone else saying, I don't like this part, I love this part that tells me what the next step should be and the evolution of something like this that continues to help people see themselves and see how they align with everyone else they know and don't know within, mm -hmm. within spheres of community so that connections can be made faster, solutions can be found faster, alignment can happen, funding can find its spots, people can see where projects are ready to, to burgeon forth, people can see where whole, there are holes either in their in, in, in ways that um, provide insight to at least acknowledge, oh yeah, no, we know those are holes. That's not where we're working and that's fine. Or, ooh, mm -hmm. there are holes in this particular system and we wanna, we wanna fill those before we implement whatever we're implementing, right? So it just, mm -hmm. if, if, it, if all this does is create a new layer of questions that we could not ask before because we didn't have enough information to even ask the questions, awesome right that's the that's the minimal layer here that i'm looking for and i think the more we can layer on information in a way that people can make sense of it quickly the more questions will get generated oh there's five resources over here i didn't even know that happened you know and yep. being able to catalyze and also spark more change more synthesis more synergies more quickly okay so um like we're each in our own communities and there, there may be some success stories that some of us will find there may be challenges some of us may see things that could be improved so yeah i guess it's a capturing all that knowledge that among us first and then seeing where there is potential to leverage other people's expertise to bring people in on uh, possible projects Right. That's, that's the exactly. ultimate goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so it could be that a, a single person looks at the map and immediately has a bunch of action they want to take on either meeting people or, or talking to somebody who's starting a project they didn't know existed or looking into a resource or an artifact or a app or that they, that would help them. But it could also be, um, you know, another layer on top of this that doesn't make sense yet, but will probably very, very soon is questions for the group. Right. Like I have a question in this area that to me is a leading question. You know, there's people who have learning questions. Hopefully they'll do more research than they will pose a bunch of questions. But really, I'm looking I would be looking for what are the leading questions that this group is having right now? And they're trying to answer. And so they're either going to start having meetings on that or they're going to they're basically asking the community, is there anyone who knows anyone who can help us answer this question? Right. So that we can also move the conversation down the road as as a community. A lot of times I think we're asking the same questions over and over and over again, different groups of people, which is totally fine. But can we maybe help to elevate that a little bit by saying right now, this is the leading question of this particular segment. And that allows someone else with expertise to come right in at the edge of where that current group is and orient themselves a little faster and say, oh, awesome. Like, I'm gonna, let's pick up right there. I have something, I have something to offer. Yeah, so if you were able to see over time, this wiki evolving for each topic and who's um, thinking what and how people are sharing ideas and uh, yeah, then you have some artifacts where you 
you may get an expert someday who could look at that and say, oh, that's wrong, but these three will work. And yes, or you may, or the group may decide, hey, we need to pause. We need to go find an expert who can answer this question, right? Mm -hmm. right? They'll realize that they're at the edge and they're bumping, they keep bumping that edge. And I think they'll recognize it sooner. Again, all, I think all this happens naturally anyway. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is provide a framework that will help speed it up a bit, that will help make it a little faster. And I yeah, think it's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, it. It looked very broad and I wasn't very, with, yeah, where are you focusing or what? But I, I see what you're trying to do to see what emerges as people try to work together. And, yeah. And I could easily see, take, take one segment. If we, if we have, we start to feel like we have the X and Y segments and even Z, so, you know, um, axes kind of defined pretty well then I would say then each segment could then even be drilled into. And you would have another framework inside of that, right? Like all the different areas of economics, all maybe different questions across the top. And then people would again, further define themselves or have the potential to. Yeah, I think if you focus on like what people see as practical, that like a, a low hanging fruit that they could start something with, and then you could put notes about the future of things to look at, but maybe right. there's something practical. So like the topic I signed up for was interest in is health. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised I did that because that wouldn't have occurred to me years ago that I would be interested in this. But uh, mm -hmm. from what I'm learning about how COVID's been managed and uh, there are alternatives and uh, different uh, ancient medicines are coming back to the surface. Uh, so... I just put my name there because it's something that is fascinating that we have power to get out of this medical tyranny or whatever it is. <laughs> right. Right. So I think a couple of days ago, Jordan was talking about, you know, um, bringing people together around certain topics and talking. I, if it were me, I would want to use the tapestry to tell me where there's interest, where people have interest mm -hmm. in talking about something and hopefully expertise in something and let that determine what topics get talked about the same way that OGM is having, you know, these email streams coming through. And then it's kind of emerging. Ooh, a lot of people are talking about this. Let's have a convert. Let's have an open, you know, let's open a pop-up conversation about it. I think there's a lot of value there to be going where, where people are leaning, because as you mm -hmm. just pointed out, Eric, it's, it's, you know, COVID brought up, I think for a lot of people, some topics that they all of a sudden were extremely interested in understanding mm -hmm. better, better mm -hmm. and that they never would have thought about before. And I think that happens to people all the time in their lives, depending on what's right. going on. So yeah, um, if, if I were somebody running something, knowing that there's a bunch of interest, mm -hmm. I, it becomes a, a, a kind of, you know, stupid, obvious thing, next thing to do. Yeah. So what I found myself doing is saving things locally on the topics that interest me, not knowing what to do with it yet, but uh, having it for the future use. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, and um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of hope that can be brought into, but, well, just getting out of the mindset that's been imposed on all of us with this isolation, there's a lot that can, is potential if people are willing to rise above that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And to me, the ideal dream version of this is you find yourself in a new area that you mm -hmm. totally knew and interested in, and there's an entire repository already there, mm -hmm. right? Curated by other people that right. you could sort to be local or national or, you know, international or, you know, sort by uh, uh, refining, you know, what, you know, your level of interest or your level of expertise in the area. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, and having that available already curated and, and ideally balanced as well, right? So that you could see um, and learn faster and, and again, get to the edge of that conversation so that you could contribute. Right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this good questions. Thank you. Helps me, helps me um, articulate it better. I appreciate it. Wendy, I, 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 maybe you said enough already, but um, so there's everyone's wisdom and then there's the tapestry and I wonder how those relate real quick. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's uh, everyone's wisdom was always a concept and kind of the, why the name came to me is, 
if we're trying to elevate, use technology to elevate us to wisdom, it really should be, um, um, it should be curated by everyone and it should be for everyone. So that's where the name everyone's wisdom comes from. So the tapestry to me is just one stepping stone and in, in, in doing that curated by everybody and for everybody and, and constantly um, inviting people to engage with it and contribute to it. Understanding that the more people engage and contribute, the better we all are off and, so, and solving our problems and moving forward. And so it's kind of a, a bounded tool slash project that fits in the, the larger, larger goal and the larger mission. Yeah. And, and over the past year, for me, the goal has completely changed from, I think the only way this is going to happen is if I start a business, pull together, you know, the whole thing and do it myself. And it's turned into awesome. I don't have to do the whole thing by myself. This is fabulous to have meet, met other people who are on the same or similar journey. And I'd much rather um, work to collaborate with people than to build something else. Because to me, that's inherent in, in the idea. We can't keep recreating the wheel. So why would I then be a yet another person to recreate yet another thing and put it out in the universe and hope to attract more attention to my thing over everyone else's thing. I'd rather enable as much as I can um, the emergence of, of whatever this is meant to be, um, uh, however that's meant to come out, you know, in whatever way. And if that means that um, I lend just a vision and a direction um, and encouragement and cheerleading and, you know, seeing the projects for what they are and how they fit in, great. That is the role that I will play. And I will be unbelievably happy. I, I care more about this being of benefit to people than, and I'm in a privileged position to be able to say that. And I recognize that. And I take that as a huge responsibility to make sure that, um, I use the time and the resources that I have to the good that I can, that I can give. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Great question. Stacey, you want to do any flotilla stuff? <laughs> uh, anybody else? Um, I was just going to, out of curiosity, ask um, Eric, the, the, the stuff that you save locally, how do you save it? I mean, what stuff that you... Yeah, well... I've been doing a save as of web pages and downloading of videos whenever I can download them. Um, it's like YouTube DL, but uh, that's there's been throttling on that tool. So um, yeah, they. Really I use the uh, YT yeah. DLP. Yeah, I've heard about that. I gotta try that out. It, it's amazing. Yeah, and what I've been doing is putting it on a laptop in my basement. And uh, yeah, and then um, creating uh, decentralized uh, yeah, websites from that. But really, it's really just like an FTP server. Mm -hmm. So if you know the key, you can download whatever you want from these, uh, whatever I've collected. And in my videos, I've explained the concept and where I see it going. So um, yeah, let me just paste in yeah my videos yeah. yeah so i got four videos out there so far and it's a that's a little creative outlet for me trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to explain a concept and uh yeah be creative in like cutting in little segments of and uh, new screen shares so yeah, so yeah feel free to i think mattermost would probably be the best way to send me feedback uh, just a direct message on the okay yeah cool okay. uh good for another week awesome this time i'll post the recording a little bit sooner than <laughs> the meeting before <laughs> um and i'll also get uh, last week's up today Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Wendy. Appreciate Thanks everyone's all. focus on my thing. That was really fun for me. Thank you. It's a really interesting project. More, more to come. Oh, you got to be oh, so excited. I can't even, I can't even contain myself. <laughs> I was having so much fun. Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys.
Bye.